What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Movie Resurrection Review. I'm Jay. And I'm Tim. Hi, Tim. Hi, Jay. And what movie are we going to be looking at today? We're going to be watching White, White Water, Water Summer. Summer. Is that going to be a thing from now on? We're going yes. to hit that new yes. All right, that's yeah. a new bit. I like it. Whitewater Summer is a story about a kid named Alan who basically his parents kind of convince, force him to go on this couple of week long camping trip with four other guys. It's a kind of a team building, bonding, boys become men kind of, kind of camp. So the movie was released in 1987, and what we did find out about this actually is most of the movie was filmed in 1985. 1985, which that's a, a big deal because of the cast, actually, and that's why, well, let's get into the cast. The cast, we got, oh, Kevin Bacon himself. Kevin Bacon. Six degrees of six degrees of separation from Kevin Bacon. You guys know Kevin Bacon. We don't need to, you know, we don't need to talk up Kevin Bacon. He's Kevin Bacon. Forget about it. We got Sean Austin. Sean Aston. Aston. Who Mikey from Goonies. Mikey from Goonies. Um, he for a younger audience maybe, he was Bob in Stranger Things season two. Um, he was Lord of the Ring Dorks out there. He was Samwise. Samwise. Samwise, Samwise Gully. Or right? Tully or whatever. Um, one of my favorite roles of his oh, you know what's a really good underrated movie? I'm putting it on the list. Um, Toy Soldier. Great movie, Toy dude. Soldier, which he's in, he's phenomenal in that. Yeah, him and uh, the guy who played Lenny in, in Iron Eagle. Um, one of my favorite Keith roles Coogan. of his, though, Keith Coogan was in that one too. Yeah, he was in that one. Uh, one of my favorite roles of Sean Aston, though, was as Doug um, in Fifty First Dates with Adam Sandler, <laughs> <laughs> the brother. Yeah, yeah, he was great in that. Anyways, let's go. Uh, we also got Jonathan Ward, who. Um, uh, is I guess best known for like Peter Pan Broadway. Yeah, some bit parts in TV shows and whatnot like that. Uh, we got Casey Martell, which kind of the same thing, supporting cast. Actually, he's the guy. He's this guy. Yes. Jonathan Ward is this guy. This guy. <laughs> and then we got Matt Adler. Matt which Adler is this. I'm pointing at him. This guy. The pen's blue, so it's picking up the green screen. Anyways. And you may know him from such, such roles as Dumas from Dream a Little Dream. Which we're putting that on the list, too. Flight of the Navigator. He was he, the younger, younger older, older brother. brother. Yeah. Um, uh, Teen Wolf. He played Styles' little brother, who was afraid of... Uh, of uh, Scott. Scotty. In wolf form. Was he his little brother in that one? Yeah. I think he was. Yeah. Yeah. We're putting Team Wolf on the No, we're not. I love Team Wolf, but we're not putting it on the list. So that's your main cast right there, actually. Outside of, you know, um, Alan's parents. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yes. Starring these five. Well, and Sean Aston in this particular scene, he's Alan. We don't see him because he's supposed to be doing the rock thing. And anyways, we're getting into that. So let's talk about box office. Yowzas, dude. Yowzas. Yeah, I think we found another obscure one here. Um, it does. We couldn't. I couldn't find how much the it cost to make the movie, but in the box office, and this is U.S. and Canada, it made three hundred thousand eight hundred and fifty-nine dollars. Three hundred thousand dollars. Look, we'll call it four hundred thousand. I mean. It's not even close. No, to it's not even close. To my bad. That's that's closer to three hundred. I, for, I, for, I forgot how to math. Yeah, you did. Yeah. So three hundred thousand dollars it made at the box office. And again, we said it in the last episode, but I really wish that we could find information on uh, home video release and rental release because uh, maybe it made a lot more in that regard. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. Mm. Mm, I don't know. Hopefully don't know. it did. Otherwise, that was a big loss. That's the lowest anything's made at the box office, you know? Is it? That we've done so far? Yeah. Yes, that's the lowest box office. Even Kid Coulter did better? No, we couldn't find information. Yeah, we couldn't find all nothing on Kid, on Kid Coulter. Coulter. Like but nothing. yes. Okay, so that are that's the, uh, the, specs, the specs, the statistics of it. <coughs> Let's get into the movie. Let's get into the movie. Movie starts, big city, I think it's New York. We see Vic. And he is heading over to Alan's house to talk to his parents to basically convince his parents to let Alan go on this camping trip. Now, throughout the movie, uh, we're being narrated by Alan. 
who is Mikey from the Goonies. And this is where Sean the Aston. This John Aston. Aston. This is where the 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 two year difference of shooting most of the movies and the commentary come into play because he's telling the story as a little bit older and it just works really well. It works really well. So we got Kevin Bacon. He's convincing uh, Alan's mom. Vic. We got Vic. He's convincing <laughs> Alan's mom to or Alan's parents to let him go on this uh, field trip of sorts, a man finding field trip, I guess. Um, he's against it. But in the end, he's like, oh, I'm just a kid, really. I gotta do what they tell me to. And they're like, yo, you're going. Vic does the convincing, and then we're introduced to the other boys here on this side. Who honestly... Yeah, they were all... They, I think everyone had an equal importance as far as role goes. But the story really is about Alan and Vic's struggle with each other. Button heads. Button heads big time. Um, to the point where, like, Vic is constantly riding Alan. You know, one of the first nights that they're out in the wilderness, they stop to make camp, and Alan's supposed to be getting getting water, a bucket of water, so they can cook, you know, get start getting uh, dinner cooked. And he has a knife, and he's carving his initials into a tree. So Vic, of course, he sees him doing it, gets the water, and, and uh, you know, takes the water back to the camp, whatever. And then after they eat... Vic is sitting here telling the story about this this celestial god, you know, that's a, uh, what do they call the, the star things in the sky? Um, constellations. constellations. Constellations? Constellations. Yes. And he goes through this roundabout story just to be like, oh, by the way, Alan, um, I caught him uh, carving his initials into a tree. Group, how do you think we should punish him? And someone suggests that they take his knife away for a little bit. Um, we'll take it away, and then someone was like, we'll take it away, but we'll give it back a little bit later. And it's it's kind of funny, because Vic is like, Alan, do you think that's fair? It truly is, you know, while he's riding him, it truly is like trying to teach him some sort of responsibility and, and being grown up. So the message is actually there, in my opinion, from the beginning. Yeah, I some think. value, some some stuff that you can actually use for later on in life to be a good person. Good way to good way to put it. Some values, yes, yes. So now <clears throat> they get up the next day, and the boys are carrying this canoe. Alan's not carrying the canoe, and they get down to the waterfront, the riverfront, and Vic is like, "All right, um, I'm taking the canoe down, and you guys meet me at the designated rendezvous point." Um, Alan, you're coming with me. At which point, one of the other boys gets a little upset, and he's like, dude, I thought it'd be me. Right. But again, though, I think this is Vic recognizing that Alan is the weak one in the group. Needs the most help. Needs the most help, right. And I think the intent with Vic was good, because Vic's not a bad guy. No. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At this point, he's not a bad guy yet. And I, I really do. I think he was really buying into and believing hey, I need to help this kid out. You know, he needs the most help. He's he's the youngest. He's the smallest. He's the weakest. Um, you know, even even maybe mentally not, not as developed as the rest of them yet, mm -hmm. you know? So this is another learning lesson for Alan. And even Alan is shocked. He's like, me? Like, what do I know about right. this kind of thing, you know? So they take off down the river. And it's white water rafting. And... Vic, Vic is is being the the steerer and the paddler pretty much. He uh, Alan loses his oar, and he's just like, "Oh man, what's going on?" You know, and it's it's the dude's scared. The dude gets scared because he's never been on a on a on a uh, canoe before. First off, if you've never been on a canoe before, don't go white water rafting. Yeah, you don't want water <laughs> rafting on a canoe. And that that was Vic's bad, in my opinion. Yeah, that was that was Vic. Maybe 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 he was being a dick. Actually, <laughs> that's like trying to teach a kid how to swim, grabbing him and throwing him in the deep end, and be like, survive. Yeah, you kind know. Of. And and he he took it that way. That's exactly how Alan took it. He's like he's like you did that on purpose. You tried killing me. You know why'd you do that? And Vic, he's like they made they make it down the river. And Vic's like, oh yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's a rush to him and everything else, and he's expecting Alan to be, to be like copacetic, be like, oh that was great, but no, Vic takes it as a as a personal assault on him. Alan took it. Oh, Alan took yeah. it as a personal assault on him, and this is 
Because well, even even Vic was like, "Dude, you did it!" Like, yeah, yeah, you the, you survived this. Like that's that's legit. I think this is the first time we see Vic like recognizing there's going to be a, a major issue, major issue with yes. with with them button heads yes. later on down the road. And 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 it, it continues like this is the thing. It Just continues steadily, the entire movie steadily. steadily. He right. he gets a little bit. Uh, Vic gets a little bit sterner and and more outrageous with his. His his punishments mm -hmm. and what he wants Alan to do, and Alan gets a lot more uh, uh, stubborn. stubborn and uh, bucking the system. Yep, and it culminates. There are times where stubbornness is a good quality. Mm -hmm. This ain't one of them. Nope. <laughs> this ain't one of them. Because at the end of the day, Alan's gonna lose. <laughs> Sure. Alan's gonna lose, you know, just by by sheer proxy of yo, this dude's bigger than you. <laughs> Next point of controversy is the rope bridge. Controversy, conflict, 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 controversy, kind of the same thing, right? The next point of conflict is the rope bridge, and I'll actually be telling a story about one of these from my Boy Scout days at the end of this. I'm trying to do a story at the end, right? So this rope bridge is literally that. It's a bridge made of rope. And it has uh, boards on the bottom. I was gonna say two by fours, but they're more like one planks, by six. Like, like yeah, planks, some... yeah. Um, and you've got to, you know, get across the rope bridge. And where this becomes an issue is, you know, Alan's scared, but the other guys are scared too. You know, and he even says in, in you know, Vic talking about, you know, being responsible and whatnot. He tells the guys, he's like, hey, do me a favor when we're out here. No messing around. Mm -hmm. Like, this is serious. Because you fall off this thing, you're dead. Right. You're dead if you fall off this thing. Well, Alan is carrying the tent poles for all the tents. Not all, sorry, not all the tents. For one of the tents. And the poles get left behind. So, he winds up, the three, the four... <clears throat> Four guys you see in the picture, actually, they wind up crossing first. First, and Vic tells them, "Hey, we're gonna go to camp. It's a mile down the way. It's very easy. Just follow the trail. You can find us, no problem. Come over when you're ready." Recognizing that he's scared, mm -hmm. you know, not trying to force him anything like that. Um, I don't know that walking off was the right <laughs> answer, but so Alan winds up crossing, gets to the camp. And one of the guys is like, where are the tent poles? And Alan realizes, ah, oh, shit, I left the tent poles behind. He's like, well, where are they at? He's like, other side of the bridge. So, it's okay, go get them. You left them, go get them. That's reasonable. Nothing wrong there, right? Mm -hmm. So Alan gets back to the bridge. He tries to cross back over to get the tent poles, and he, he just can't do it. Like, the, the fear is has set in. He, he cannot do it. So he goes back to the camp, and he's like, hey, uh... Tent poles weren't there. They're they're gone. And I think someone even says, "What? They just get up and walk <laughs> off?" Well, Vic had tailed Alan, and immediately after, he's like, "I don't know where they were. They just weren't there." He drops the, the tent poles and is like, "You're lying. You were scared. You didn't go across the bridge. I was there. I saw you." At which point, Alan's like, "Wait, you were watching me? You know, it's kind of a valid like. Hey, that's weird, right?" So. Basically, the lesson here was like, you got to stop lying. You got to stop lying to us. You know what I mean? Like, be honest. It's okay to be scared, whatever kind of thing. Just let us know and, and we, we can help each other. Right. Next point of conflict is this radio, dude. This radio gets Alan to a little bit of shit, dude. Like, he's trying to listen to a, a Yankees game or whatever. Nuts. And Vic, justifiably, is like, yo, this is we're getting back to nature. No radios. No, none of that stuff. You know, we're catching fish with our bare hands. We're starting fires with a, a bow and stick, you know, that type of stuff. And this radio is going against that. Well, Vic's trying to meditate, and he hears the radio. And he's just like, yo, Alan, I told you about the radio. Turn it off. And Alan's like, why? You know, he's, he's still rubbing people roughly, rubbing Vic very roughly. So... <coughs> Vic gets a little upset, and I think this is his, his really first outburst. He grabs a radio and pulls a uh, um, uh, a Johnny from uh, Karate Kid and just smashes that thing. Bam! To which he sternly says, "No radio." He's yeah, this is where this is where Vic, for the first time, is like, "Hey, you're pissing me off. I'm letting you know you're pissing me off. Stop pissing me off." Right. Right. And then, 
we get into um, the island. The island. They're they're when they're down by this you know this waterfront. There's an island you know kind of in the you know what's weird. It looked like it was a lake. With just an island. In with the an middle. island in the middle, but it should have been a river. Shouldn't it have been a river? Anyways, anyways, there's an island. They all go to the island the next day, and he wants them to try to fish, and you know fish either using a stick that they've carved into a point, try to use their hands, try to do something. Well, Alan, being a smart kid, he actually rigs up this thing to where the fish kind of swim into it and get stuck, and it's just easy pickings. Yeah, right? because Vic comes to check on the boys and they're think, like, oh, I got one. Think think like a um, like a rat trap or a, uh, a, 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 a raccoon trap or raccoon something. Raccoon trap. They get in, they can't get out. Kind right. of thing. Uh, so Vic, he goes to check on him. One caught one. Someone, one, another one didn't catch anything. I think another uh, kid caught two. And here comes Alan with a bucket of fish, <laughs> overflowing. And that right there is like Vic's like, huh? Interesting. You know, this guy can't cross a rope bridge. He can't. He lies to us. He listens to the radio. You tell me he caught all this by a stick in his hands, but they're all alive. So that's. And then. He's like, oh yeah, it's easy, just on the other side of the island. And then you hear, king, 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 king. And that's his little bell. He's like, here, I'll show you. He shows him his little contraption oh, he, he made. so proud of it. Yeah. <laughs> and Vic wasn't having Vic it. Vic wasn't having it. <laughs> Vic, that right there was like, boom. He, yeah. he, blew, he blew a gasket. He blew so a gasket he grabs a bucket, one. throws the fish out, and as punishment for not doing it the way Vic wanted you to, for a life learning skill, I guess, he makes him clean the fish. But Alan's not having that shit either. He's like, I ain't cleaning no fish. He's like, it's easy. Grabs his knife, chops the head off, slices the belly, grabs Alan's fingers, and guts the fish. With, with, <laughs> Alan's, with Alan's finger. Yeah. Yes. And he's like, here, there's like five more to do. We're going to go over there while you do this. When you get done, signal us and we'll come get you. Alan, in his stubbornness and hard-headedness, decides, I ain't cleaning these damn fish. Like, F that. So he never cleans the fish. So it gets later in the day, later in the day. They got a fire going. Winds There's, up spending the night. Storm hits. Everyone's... And even Vic is like, oh, shit, I think I, I, I went too hard on the kid, you know? Because Alan's out there in the storm with nothing, and they got their ponchos and everything else. And he realizes maybe he was, he was too hard on the kid, yeah. but... At that point, you can't go back. Can't go back? Yeah, you can't go back on it, right? Yeah. Cause... So the next morning, uh, Alan still never signaled, and he tells the other boys, he goes, hey, get get breakfast made, and then go get go get Alan. So the boys eat, and then they go across to the island to get Alan. They find him, and they're like, you good? And he's like, nah, F those fish. <laughs> I, I, I threw them back after that. And they're like, dude, like, come on, man. Like, yeah, it was a little rough. It was a little harsh, but just... Do the punishment, do what you got to do, and let's get it over with. So they wind up loading him up, going back to the uh, the campsite, which is literally right across, you know, the river, lake, whatever it was, and Vic's gone. So now they're looking around for Vic. They can't find Vic anywhere. They're screaming his name, screaming his name. Then they start arguing amongst themselves, fighting and whatnot. And um, I think Alan's radio actually gets thrown at a tree this time smashed to bits because he was like hey call a ranger forest or something right okay right right that's right was, that's right. what it was so they were basically like okay vic has gone what do we do which is funny because at the end of the day i think this is a test and he leaves them there overnight by themselves and the big storm hit a bigger storm hit that evening and it was like hey you guys have been with me over a week let's see what you got they didn't know it was a test you know, when he comes back, they're like, where the hell were you? And he's like, it doesn't matter. You guys survived. You did it without me. He's he's teaching a lesson, but it's just kind of done in the wrong way. And that this this is the point where Alan is special. Well, Alan already hates him at yeah. this point. This is the point where some of the other guys are like, okay, wait, wait a minute. That's a little, you know. It's a little rough. It's a little rough, a little extreme. weird. That you, yeah, a little extreme that you left us out here with no help and no whatever. But he plays it up. You guys, you, you did it. You did it. You guys survived. You didn't need me. You did it on your own. Blah, 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 blah. Good job. And they're kind of like, all right, yeah, all right, good job, you know. So now fast forward to, it's not the last conflict, but close, right? Yeah. The, uh, as you can see in this scene behind us, this is where they are uh, rock, They're climbing rock a climbing. mountain. And they come to a point it's where they... Devil's Tooth. Devil's Tooth, I think. Yeah. Is, yeah, I think that's right. Come to a point where they can't 
just like climb. They gotta like rappel over. Okay. So Vic climbs up, he sets his fucking anchor points, comes down, boom, he's the first one over. Then the second guy, third guy, fourth guy, the last guy left. Oh Alan, baby. Oh Alan. So Alan He's like, oh man! So he he gives it a, he gives it a go. He tries his best, ends up falling short, and they couldn't grab him, right? Well, then he can't make it quite back to the other side, so he ends up doing the dangle maneuver. Yeah, we get stuck in the middle, right? And everyone's like, yo, go get him, go get him! And Vic's like, nah, nah, he can do it. He can get himself out of this. Tells him how to do it, you know. And then he's pretty much like, you know what? To Vic's credit, let me interject right here. To Vic's credit, he was like, he's not going to learn anything if I just go bail him out. Right. Alan, listen to me. Here's what you need to do. You can do this. I know you can do this. Do these things. And Alan just wouldn't do it. Right. Now, Alan's sitting here dangling on a freaking cliffside, hundreds of feet up in the air. He's scared as hell. So I get it. Right. So Vic just had enough. He's just like, you know, he's not listening to me. He's like, you know what? When you get ready, you can get on to this other side. We're, we're booking out. So, everyone leaves him. And right here, you got two or three of, I, I guess everyone but Vic is like, man, that's messed up. You yeah. know, but, but they follow Vic because they're a bunch of followers. So, Alan reaches deep down in his crawl. And he's like, man, I'm going to get up out of this thing. I ain't settling. Ends up kicking himself, getting bouncing off the wall, gets his footing, climbs back to the other side. And he's like, well, screw this. Ah, he swings, makes it, bam, unties himself, meets up with them. And at this point, all the other kids are like, oh, good job. And he's just like smacking their hands away. He's fucking had he's enough. Pissed, yeah. He's, he's like, man, that was some bullshit, Vic. You fucking left me out there to die. Screw you. I'm going home. Yeah. And Vic's like, you can't go home. And the other boys are like, no, Vic, that was fucked up. We're going home, too. Finally, the other boys, for the first time, say something and stick up for Alan. At this point, Vic is is seeing that that it's it's getting away from him. You know, the 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 rain, the control is getting away from him. So he's like, "Y'all aren't going anywhere. Fuck that shit." Okay, and actually gets to a point where he starts chasing <laughs> Alan and the other boys, or Alan really, and the other boys go after Vic because now like Vic's on this warpath. Yeah, like the dude finally snapped. He said, "Screw your and your your antics and your 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 technology." And and your your gizmos and components and, and your whatever, it's not supposed to be like that. And he's lost control, and he's trying to get everything back to his control, but it's already gone. It's already gone. So he he he's literally chasing this guy, fighting with another kid at the same time. They get into a fight. He ends up getting a rock thrown at his head. Bam! He falls off the cliff. And he's like, uh, uh. He, he snapped his leg in twine. <laughs> in twine. In twine. It's, it's poking out the the, yeah. the the top of his leg and stuff. So now, there's a decision to be made here. Alan and the rest of the guys, they wind up getting the, uh, Alan and his, uh, uh, his contraptions. contraptions. He rigs up this like pulley system, and they wind up getting a rope down to him. Vic puts it around, you know, his his shoulders, and they wind up getting him up, pulling him up. You know, they get him taken care of, cleaned up a little bit. And at this point, Alan sends the rest of the guys off to find help. Go find a ranger station. Go find something. Go find someone. Right. I'm gonna stay here with Vic. Now this this is what's showing, in my opinion, this is showing what Alan is made of right and and maybe on this trip he grew to a certain level you know found something within himself but as big a dick as Vic has been to him he sticks around to help him right to watch him to make sure that he's okay and okay? actually uses the techniques and, and, and survival training that Vic has been trying to get him to to do yeah he's absorbing that he's a smart kid yeah he's a smart kid so in in the beginning we see vic and he's got a uh bow and stick a bow and stick basically for lack of a better word right and it's one of those things where sh- 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 you got the string wrapped around the uh, stick and you do this for on friction some, yeah for friction to to create uh fire. fire and he even makes a joke he goes we do the first fire like this from here on out, we use kitchen matches. Yeah, none of the other kids did it. Yeah. So Vic, or sorry, Alan has to make a fire like that because night's falling. And Vic's like, dude, where are the matches? 
And he's like, well, they kind of got ruined in that storm the other night. They're all wet. Like, we got no matches. And it's funny because now Vic is seeing that Alan is retaining things that he's taught him. You know, maybe even growing up a little bit. And he's he's looking at Alan from a different perspective now. Mm-hmm. Because one, well, he saved his life. Right. Could have left him down there. Could have been like, yo, he fell off. Yeah, could have left Sorry. him down there. And now he stayed with him. He's trying to keep him warm, trying to keep him, you know, whatever, fed and all that kind of stuff. And I think at this point, now we see Vic actually gaining respect for Alan. And Alan, maybe not realizing it, learning things from Vic, he's putting it to in, into use and into play mm-hmm. to survive. So maybe there's a little bit of respect kind of mutually going back and forth right Flowing now. Flowing back and forth between right. each, each other. So it gets to a point where Alan makes a decision. He's like, "Yo, we gotta go. Like, they're they're taking a while. Like, we gotta get we gotta get some somewhere downstream, some yeah, kind of way." Because you're getting worse. Yeah, you're getting worse, basically. So he loads Vic up in the canoe. He gets where Vic was in the beginning of the movie, and he's just like, "Let's do it, Kamikaze!" Ah, and he starts white watering. <coughs> And stuff like that. A paddle gets lost. They've lost like three or four paddles in this movie. <laughs> There's only two to begin with. <laughs> There's only two to begin with. So, so another paddle gets lost, and they're just all white watering and everything else. And they end up going over like a waterfall, and Alan gets launched. Like, oh shit! Yeah, Alan and they both <laughs> get launched. Yeah, um, and you know they kind of get down to like the mouth of this river, and you know. It's, Vic starts kind of swirling around. Alan gets him, drags him up on shore. And at that point, we see the helicopter come down. They load him up, Vic up in the basket. They get Alan on there. And Alan saved the day. Yeah. And that's pretty much the movie, isn't it? That is the movie. It's pretty much the movie. What do we got in Rotten Tomatoes? (coughs) If anything. Let's go to the tomato meter here. Um, We do have... Rotten Tomatoes. Damn. Yeah, I know. What? Eight critics review. The tomato meter is a 25%. Boo. Boo. The audience score, 5,000 plus ratings, only a 53%. So, you go first this I'm time. I'm willing to say this. Okay, what we described is not doing this movie justice at all. This was a very bland, I, I would say, uh, a description of, of how this movie is. So much funner to watch. You guys, this is a, a must-watch, I feel. Uh, screw that 300000 they made and screw those people on the tomatoes. <laughs> um, I give it... I'm a, You know what? I'm going to give it a, a six and a half, seven. Six and a half, seven. Okay, yes. okay. Yes. Okay. Um, I, I kind of like what you said here, the way you described the, this review. Like, it's a kind of a bland review. Yes. It's not a bland movie. It's just not a super action-packed movie, although we just went over all the action in the, in the movie. <laughs> it's not like, you know, uh, shit blowing up and skiing on one ski kind of stuff or anything like yeah. that, right? You're right. This review is not giving it justice at all. Um, the fact that you can take really five people, keep the story interesting... Keep you wanting to watch the story, the movie, and the setting is just the woods. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, 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 yeah, I guess, yeah, we're doing a very poor job yeah. making, you know, tell, like, go watch this movie, though, honestly. Yeah. It, it's going to hold your interest. And where did we watch this one? This one was Tubi. Because I think we forgot to say that in the last one. Tubi will watch this Tubi one. Tubi on this one, yes, which. You know, Tubi, if you want to sponsor, we'll shout, we'll watch every movie on Tubi, just saying. Um, the acting was good. The I think Kevin, good. Kevin Bacon's a great actor, and he was even then, in my yeah. opinion. Um, Sean Astin, pretty damn good actor, too, and was even then, yeah. I thought. The supporting cast, there wasn't, you know, any moments where I'm like, okay, you guys are just cheese dicks or anything like that. It was, it was, it was good. It was good. You gave it a seven? I'm gonna give it a seven. Six and a half, seven. Six I'm, and I'm a half, gonna, seven. I'm gonna go seven. I think it's, it's, it's better than it's not. If yes. that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. It definitely leans more good than it would bad, despite what Rotten Tomato says. I say give this movie a chance. It's just not that action packed. It's, it's not, not that, that action packed, right? If you're looking for explosions and shit like that, it's ain't for you. But if you're looking at just a very well written, very well acted, <sighs> very well executed movie. 
that's not in the norm. It's not like a, a normal a normal it's movie that, that you would see back then or just nowadays, I guess, really. Yeah. Um, but is it worth it? Yes. Okay. So you go six and a half. I'm going to go seven-ish on it. And, you know, maybe I'm being a little more generous than you. So we got a 6.75 overall. Yeah. I think it is good. I really hope you guys do watch this movie. Come back and let us know in the comments if you did watch the movie. Let us know what you think. I think we've been pretty fair and pretty on point with all of our reviews to this point. Yeah. You know, even had people say, hey, I watched Kid Coulter and you guys were right. <laughs> Spot on. You know, which I think I'm going to say that sorry means. Sorry about that. Yeah, sorry about that. So, okay, there we go. We got an average score of 6.75. I like it. And now let's get into the story time. So this rope bridge that was 183 feet off the ground. Um, and there's even a point in the movie where Sean Astin has made his own little mini rope bridge. <laughs> a mock-up. A mock-up. And he uses an example of the egg. And he's like, this is what could happen. Uh-oh. Drops the egg, drops on a rock, splat, and he's like, that could have been me. He ain't wrong. So, when I was in Boy Scouts, we had gone camping, and Melville was actually with me on this one. We made our own rope bridge, and it wasn't because of the movie. You know, rope, like, Whitewater Summer didn't invent the rope bridge. <laughs> so, we made our own rope bridge, we went across a river, and, you know, the canyon that they crossed was what 100 plus feet long mm -hmm. we might have been like 40 feet <laughs> okay. okay it was still not it's still not a slouch you know? yeah and instead of being 183 feet off the ground we were like seven and the river was underneath us so if someone fell off the rope bridge and many people did they weren't going to get hurt okay right the only difference in our rope bridge is we didn't have the planks on it which made it harder. So it was just a rope, like a thick rope, mm -hmm. and then you had all the other ropes coming off and you had the handles. Okay. Okay. And I remember even then the scoutmaster going, you know, if you start to get your balance off, whatever, push out. And I said this during when we were watching the movie. If you start to start swaying, whatever, you can't control it, like push out. That way you, you've got a, a good um, uh, center of gravity. So... We get on this bridge, and the entire troop was trying to cross the bridge. And some people made it, uh, some people didn't. This one guy actually had fallen, caught himself on on the, the bottom thing, his feet hit the water, he kicked his feet up, he got his bangs, managed to get back up on his really? feet. Really? Yeah, and actually, I actually made it across. No, no, nothing spectacular about my story <laughs> there, you know what I mean? But I was probably like 100 pounds, you know, and like, you know, there was there was just... It didn't even move when you walked yeah, out. Yeah, it didn't even move. It was like I was walking a tightrope yeah. and shit, and I was dancing back and forth on it. Oh, look at me. Freaking doing the MC Hammer typewriter across it and shit. Yeah, no, I wasn't. But, uh, no, I have actually had a story about the road bridge, so it's funny that the road bridge is in this. And I've forgotten about the road bridge when we started watching the movie. And, again, I even said, and I was like, oh, we did this in Boy Scouts. So I was like, yeah. that'll be the story. So, um, you know, if we had more time and weren't so freaking lazy... It would be really neat to try to do a rope bridge. Oh, yeah? <laughs> to try to do one. Yeah. <coughs> That'd be cool. But we ain't got the time. No. And we're lazy. And we're lazy. So yeah. you get me telling you about a rope bridge <laughs> from 30 years ago. <laughs> 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 Excuse me. Anyways, appreciate you guys watching. Uh, let us know what you think of the movie. Um, and again, as always, if you got a movie suggestion, put it down in the comments. And if we like the suggestion, we'll do the movie. A 2B. Cheeky later, Tubi.